There are so many nuances to picking a kettle baby when you're picking your first kettle baby. And so I feel like industry standard is first you wanna choose something that you can press overhead for eight to 10 reps. And I was first starting out in kettlebells that probably would have been a 17.5 pound kettlebell. Then industry standard's gonna tell you you need something heavier because your squats and your kettlebell swings are lower body movements, which means we're stronger in our lower body, we can use more load. So sure the 17.5 can go overhead, but if I try to swing it, then my form is going to be all off because it's going to be entirely too easy and I'm not going to get that beautiful pendulum feeling that you get when your bell is heavy enough to require that your form is correct. So I also would have gotten my 25 pound bell. From there, I could have branched off into many different directions. What I ended up doing was getting two 25 pound bells to do double kettlebell work, which was a mistake because double bells are harder than single bells. So my 25 was too heavy. But what I would have done next is probably get in another 17.5 so that I had a set here. And that way, as I started started to advance in my kettlebell skills and I wanted to try double kettlebell work, I was able to do it. From there, you might think the next natural thing is to get a 25 pound, but if anything, you probably are getting stronger and stronger. And I would have added a 35 pound into the mix first so that I could do things like swings and goblet stuff and single kettlebell work with my 35 pound. And then eventually the kettle babies just grow. Yes, the real takeaway of this video is not really gonna matter because you're gonna end up with a family of kettlebells anyways. It's a break, it's yeah, it's true.